I'd love to have a European title in the next two years. That's a great title. I think I think that would be a that'd be a good and realistic show to have a European title in the next two years. Key Mitman is gonna fight an undefeated prospect on the Baturbia Smith undercard. You maybe you might be on the undercard, you might be fighting me before that. But that's a fucking massive fight for Kino, isn't it? That's deadly, man. It's what dreams are made of, isn't it? Madison Square Garden, you don't get bigger than that. You don't. When you're fighting a boat, <laughs> it's not like you're fighting bumps. Yeah. Sonny Martinez, who Campbell Hatton for. Yeah. You that, thought, was, that was a good one, that was. That was a tough one for me, because... Superfly Tony Brown. Like, people don't really know, like, yours and his connection. <laughs> <laughs> I have another one That'll pick that up, that, mate. There's Stop another one. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> I can't help it, Johnny. Disgusting. Welcome to Fight Club 24-7. My name's Johnny Rashman. Right, we've got a dub in the house. <laughs> dub in the house, yeah. Dublin's finest. Dublin's finest. Right? Un undefeated. Let me talk so one sec. Undefeated. <laughs> like, well... Undefeated like well to eight nine and oh Ryan O'Rourke. Going well. <laughs> How you doing, mate? I'm good, yeah. You? Yeah, not bad, mate. Right. First of all, I want to explain to people just exactly what goes into boxing for you. There's no other side job. There's no university. You live and breathe boxing. Every single thing is dependent on boxing. Your wages, your future wages, everything is going into it. What the fuck are you going to do for this if it doesn't work out? <laughs> I don't know. There's no safety plan. There's no backup plan. This is this is the only plan. So we're gonna, we have to make work. That's it, it. A lot of people don't realise the dedication put in. A lot of profiles will see, but like some people may say, "Well, do you not have do you not have a backup plan, or do you not want to do anything else?" And but there's not. It's not like that. With you. I think I do agree. Some fighters should have backup plans, yeah. but I just think. It's been your way of life, hasn't it? Now boxing since once before you were born, or when you were born, or after you were born, or since as far back as I can remember. Yeah, I think a backup plan that just takes away a focus from the from the main plan. So, or you're just lazy, you know. Doing <laughs> <laughs> so I like the force one better, John. <laughs> it it sounds fair. better. I let it that bit out. <laughs> no, so um, I always say if you follow me on social media, you'll see. Um, you may, you probably didn't think Ryan is an actual person. He does have blood pumping around his body, he has a heart, he has brain receptors that connect to his consciousness and that's formed that forms his consciousness. He has bones in his body. You're a real person. I am. I'm just checking. You do speak, you do live, you do I move. do. I do a bit of everything. <laughs> a lot of people like Skeev, he's called a silent assassin, right? But he has got a personality, right? And he has he likes to keep it quiet, but he's got a big gob when he needs it. Ryan. So at the moment, nine and now. Right, yeah. we've signed with Star Boxing. I'm not going to go through everything because we're going to yeah. go. We're going to do that at a different time. I'm um, going to give you a story a different time. I just want to talk. I want to bring people in at the moment where you're at. So, Star Boxing, their promotional outlet, who have Joe Smith Jr. under the box. Yeah. That he's going to fight Baturbiev, and there's going to be big news coming on about that. Uh, so this, we don't say anything too soon. We don't say anything too soon, but yeah. I think by the time this comes out, the news will the come news out. Will have dropped, yeah. So it's going to be big, isn't it? Yeah. For the German very and everything. Big, very big, yeah. Massive. Um, Great news. We'll just talk about it anyway, just quickly. So Key Mitman is going to fight an undefeated prospect on the Baturbiev Smith undercard. You Maybe you might be on the undercard, you might be fighting a week before that. But that's a fucking massive fight for Kino, isn't it? That's... Oh, Deadly man, it's what dreams are made of, isn't it? Madison Square Garden, you don't get bigger than that. You don't. World title fight. It's brilliant, man. I can't wait for it. Well, the world, world title fight's not key news fight, but obviously yeah, Baturbia yeah. and Smith unification On the undercard, like. And that's a trade fight. Like Everyone yeah. wants to watch that fight. In boxing, casual yeah. might not, but hardcore fans. Mm. So hopefully I'll be there as well. Hopefully I'll be there as I'll well. Yeah. A cup of tea and Guinness. And cup of tea and Guinness, and that's a, a problem my combo. And a crumpet. Yeah. I don't know if that's very Irish. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it's going to be mega. And it's, I'm delighted for the gym because, you know, a lot of pe a lot of fighters have been getting opportunities. And I've said it, a lot of fighters that have been given the opportunities, just not as talented as you boys, they're not. But we all know politics involve different people involved and this and that and someone's cousin and someone's this and someone knows this one. And, you know, they get ahead, they get further ahead where you, you boys have sat back Keep your mouth shut. Let things progress. Right? You're not linked to anything. You don't cause trouble. You keep all you do is train. Right? You don't cause. You don't talk. You don't talk shit. You're not. You. 
you're not a problem for anyone. You just train and fight. And now, I think it looks like you're going to get the recognition you deserve. You boys with Tony Brown and your Jim Keane, Tain and Bradley fought last week. Good Another good sensational turn, yeah. talent. Um, but just quickly going back to the Keno fight. So Key McMahon is, um, I'm not sure his record is. He eight and two or nine? Have to get seven and two. I think he's seven and two. Um, but this guy will be thinking Keen's a walkover, and um, unfortunately for him, he's going to uh, find out pretty quickly that he's not. And um, it's going to be a mad occasion for Keen because you, you're in the gym with him. Um, what, what do you think the atmosphere is going to be like? I think. I mean, really, there's a case to say he's probably the biggest fight up in the professional terms for the gym. Definitely, yeah. Madison Square Garden against an undefeated fighter on the card of a world title fight. I mean, it probably is the biggest fight I've had in the gym as of yet. Big, isn't it? Very big, yeah. And you know what? He wins that fight, Keane. He wins it for me, yeah. I think he's... I'm, man might go into it underestimating him and then... He is, isn't he? Get a, a quick, sharp double jab in the, yeah. <laughs> in the face and he knows him for a big this. one. What's yeah. his name again, the bloke? It's J.S. Uh, someone or... Uh, I'll get his name up. Um, to be fair, I've not heard much of him, but I know he's a prospect. He's undefeated, and he won't be on this. He won't be on this fat card if he wasn't a wasn't decent it, yeah. prospect. So this bloke's thinking he's probably going to walk through Keane, and um, as I say, he's going to find out very quickly that Keane's got great fundamentals. He's a good boxer, Keane. Exceptional boxer, is, man, is he? Exceptional boxer. He is fastest hands I've sparred against. Anyway, definitely the fastest. Job. Really, really, yeah. You sparred a few people. You've been there. With Zalfa Bauer, um, Sam Maxwell, um, Gallagher's Taylor, gym, you, Liam Taylor, Jack Hatchell, Jack Gallagher's Hatchell. gym. So you, it's yeah. Gallagher's gym. So you think Keane's got the fastest job? And fastest definitely, job? definitely. He has got a good down. job. He's got a good body shot as well. Yeah, um, they're looking forward to it. Massive. Right, Ryan. What's going ahead with your career at the moment? Well, I finally got I finally got across the uh, finally got across star boxing in the US. Long time in the waiting. It's about two years since I started, since I forced on the contract to when I for, actually forced fall. Nearly two years to the month. Uh, it was great to finally get across. I enjoyed it. I can't wait to get back. Hopefully I'll have a fight day soon. And yeah, I can't wait. Let's let people know you basically signed the contract before COVID. COVID hit and um, basically it just... Just and, and, everything. and you were fighting and to be fair I didn't sit you, around and wait I went, no. and went and got the fights no. I could have easily just sat there training out at the time just waited for me opportunity to go to America but again we manager we train and we die everybody in the gym we wanted to fight with fighters so we went out and fought while we were waiting and we people don't realise like the process of that of not being backed by a big promotional outlet and um, not being on mainstream TV. So when you're fighting on these small hall shows abroad, they're like fucking, they're cost, basically costing you money, basically. Yeah. And people don't understand. That's how dedicated you are to this. It's like, yeah. all right, I'm going to have to shell out a bit of money, but I need to get my record going. And you're not like you're fighting bums. It's like, all right, you're not, not fighters that are going to beat you. When you're fighting abroad, <laughs> it's not like you're fighting bums. Yeah. Sonny Martinez, who Campbell Hatton fought. Yeah. You that, was, that was a good one. That was that was a tough one for me because he was he's a he's a good decent enough boxer himself. But it was in it was in uh, Valencia, which is his back garden. I'm pretty sure he works as a bouncer about thirty yards down the road from where we fought. Man, I, it was in a basketball stadium. It was easily thirty degrees inside the stadium that night. Yeah, it was honestly September, it wasn't was it? Sickening, yeah. The heat in there. He had, he had about 60, 70, 80 fans there. Like, I was like the away fighter coming in. But I was coming into the home corner, man. But I walked out to Bills, walked out to the loss. So it was a good experience that early in my career, like for the fourth fight. I was nearly like the away fighter there, yeah. When we're saying 60, 80 fans, it's because it was COVID. So that was a lot uh, of yeah, fans. Yeah, there was only, there was only like, yeah. I'd say 400 people allowed in the, in the stadium. So yeah. And I mean, fans. looking back now, with when Campbell had his name, uh, his name rose up when he really beat Campbell Hatton. That's my opinion, anyway. Even though I'd, I'd probably be mine as well, yeah. Yeah, you know. So look, that was your what? Your fourth fight. Fourth. Yeah. So that was your fourth fight. It's a decent name. Do you know what I mean? You look it now, looks a bit better now than I did at the time. It looks a bit better. It's only your favourite yeah. Campbell Hatton, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so as I say, you know, you weren't fighting complete bums, like no. completely not. So you get in that experience fighting in the heat. Yeah. And it was a, it went the six rounds, didn't it? it you six round, one, yeah. But and your box is fucking end up to be quite frank. But that heat and to go through and still push the pace at the end of the yeah. fight, do you know what I mean? So 
tick the box. A great experience. And then you have another fights in Spain, Poland, there and there. And again, and it all accumulated to your star boxing debut a few weeks ago, which you put on a bit of a show. You didn't stop the guy, no. but you outboxed him just completely. But I think people are impressed by it. What do you mean rushing your work? I just wasn't taking my time. I wasn't setting up my shots. I was a bit eager. To, again, because I was out of ring for 10 months, I just wanted to just go at him. I was eager because it was American debut. I was kind of, I think I went in there looking to try and knock him out. When I, I think when you go looking for the knockout, it doesn't come. Whereas yeah. if you just stick to your boxing, stick to your fundamentals, your feints, everything like that, the knockout will come to you. You don't have to go looking for it. So stuff like that will, where me... When I go back for my second time, I think we'll be a, a lot better, a lot sounder. And you were landing clean body shots, like you were targeting the body. Yeah. You could hear it because it was in like a casino type thing. You could hear every shot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You could, like, he was taking some shots. He was a tough man. Yeah, he was, was fair yeah. play to him. He was, he was a tough bloke. Like, to give him that. What was it like fighting in New York and America and all that? Was it? Well, it's not obviously Madison Square Garden, yeah. but it's had still great experience. You've got to, you know, go through those small hall shows, even in America, to yeah. get to the big. So what was yeah. it like? It was good, yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I like fighting in America, to be fair. There's, the fans there are good, and the the venue was good. And I just, I just, the venue looked like Blackpool Promenade. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <the room laughs> me, maybe the room we fought in wasn't the, the best, but the actual, the yeah, whole yeah, the whole yeah, venue correct. in total, the yeah, casino yeah, yeah. and all, yeah, it was, was great, man. Did a little bit of gambling there as well. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I have the footy, footy experience. Like. Yeah, you win. I wouldn't say I won now. Would you know? play Blackjack, were you like? Blackjack, yeah. And play roulette? Uh no, I should just play black. I actually lost a lot of money. No, not a lot of money. Took out about I don't know. I just lost. I lost whatever I took out. Anyway, yeah, we'll keep that quiet. Yeah, yeah. We'll they, let they let his old man see. <laughs> <laughs> right. I want to know what does Rhino Walk do away away from boxing? Because like most boxers, life's probably pretty fucking boring. To be quite honest with you, because it's you're not going out party. You can't do. You got this day and age now. I think it's pretty obvious that boxers can't just go through camps and then have a fight, put on three stone, drink and party, yeah. have a fight. You, you're just not sustainable your career. You don't matter how talented you are, it's, yeah. the, it's the end of it. You're not going to sustain your career. So so really, you're not partying a lot, but what, what what's day to day? Is it just, is it is it the same stuff? Is it boring? Do you get a bit bored? Is it? I suppose it could be a bit boring, but then again, when you get your fight, that's when you get excited. You get a bit of fight yeah. news and you're up for it. But I'm in the gym every day. I, I like to watch football. Fortunately, yeah. it's not too great now. I'm a United fan. Yeah, yeah same. Yeah. Hopefully, better days are coming. Yeah. But I don't really go to much, yeah. Just a lot of my life is boxing. And obviously, your dad's your trainer. Yeah. Over works gym, so your household is all boxing. Is it, though? Because some people say sometimes having a dad as a trainer doesn't work. But there's times where it does, like Enzo and Enzo yeah. Kawasaki, Joe Kawasaki. Um, there's been others, but I think it like it definitely works for you, hundred percent. Definitely, yeah. But what is it? Boxing. Some people say, oh, when we get home, we um we switch off. But is uh, that not the case? Dad never switches off. Does he <laughs> he's boxing. He's a boxing man. Is he yeah. though? Yeah, definitely. As in what? Give me like examples. It's just everything's just boxing, man. Everything's boxing. What does he try and give you advice or something? Is it around the house or is he say like what? Is he just watching boxing? Always watching boxing, talking about boxing. 
discuss unboxing. Like what though? Tactics, fights, uh, routines? It's just, it's just stuff about the gym, stuff about myself, stuff about other fighters, how I could take stuff that they've done, adapt it to my style, improve. Just always trying to improve me, like myself and what I could do to come about the box and stuff like that. And it is like, um, your dad's done, your dad's done a great job. Like yeah. people, a lot of casual fans will look at you and they might not have heard of you because you don't talk shit and you've not been on the mainstream shows. You will get there, as yeah. you see on my social media. I won't, I won't be plugging him. Like he might be a friend of mine, but you know yourself. <laughs> I've got yeah. something to say. I'm going to say if they put in a bad performance. I'll say if I don't think you're going to reach a certain level. Yeah. I'll say it doesn't. I'm not biased. I'm not biased I'm favorites. Obviously, I want him to do well. But I generally believe that he can get to world level. I've seen I've seen them spar world class fighters. I watch him daily, basically. When you're over here in Manchester, I'm, I'm in your corner, so I, I can see the improvements. And I generally think you will get to world level. But it's all oh, right, me saying that. What do you think? I think you have to believe in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you don't, who else will? Uh, again, yeah. Every, every boxer has doubts, man. When when. Obviously, t times aren't going your way, so you might be having a bad spar, you might be having a bad time in the gym, yeah. but I think you just have to just keep plowing through that and the good times will come. Like, And I've sparred it, as you said, some of the names were sparred and I think I've held me on with them. So yeah. and these are a lot older than me. So and more experienced. Yeah, a lot more experienced. So I'm just looking at it like, for another five more years experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. knowledge, Time in the sport, I can only get better. Like, How old are you now, man? 23? 23. Turn 23 a couple of days ago. No, yeah. but when you say five years, what do you mean by that? You mean? Well, if you look at many of the fighters on, on the British side, when they're getting into big fights, they're 28, 29, 30, somewhere 31, 32, 33. So that'll give me 10 years to get to where they have got to. So that's the way I look at it, is I have all that time in between to gain as much knowledge, as much experience. And as much uh, everything as I can. So when I do get to that point, I can I can prove. Yeah, myself. but to counter yeah. that, we are in an era now where you can't have twenty fights against bums basically pad your record, yeah. then have that fight. Like if you look at the fights now, Tank, Javante, or these, they're at twenty three. Garcia, you know. Yeah. But obviously they're like fucking high, mm. you know, high, high, high level fighters. But like, what do you? When do you think you'll hit your peak? Because it's you, definitely. I would say, I wouldn't say five years. I think, I know what you're saying by that, like you want to soak everything you can, but mm. realistically, you're going to have to get the big, you're going to be in the big fights the next 18 months, two years for me. Yeah, probably. I'm, I'd like to get my first title within this year. Yeah. We're looking at that, definitely. And then just kick on after that. We'll see what opportunities arise. You might have to be, you might have to wait a few years for yeah. a big fight. You know what I mean? Or you, you might get a yeah, you might just knock on the door yeah. opportunity. Like, right, you fight. You don't know when it's going to come. That's again down. where you have to stay ready. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd like to stay ready and just keep getting as much experience as I can. Do you ever think, though, do you ever think, like, do you ever think, what, like, how can I compete with this fight? Or if he's in my weight class? Or, so you're like well to weight. So, what, like, like Josh Taylor and. Catchel. I you think as a Jack Catchel. Yeah, I wasn't. A, I don't think it was a fully fire on Jack Catchel a few yeah. years ago. He was wasn't in camp. I was a bit younger. It was it was a good it was good great learning experience. Me, I did learn a lot from it. Didn't do too many rounds of him. I think I did about yeah. eight in total or something like that over the course of three days, two days, something like that. But you do you do, you learn a lot from these fighters being in the ring for them, even just for a short period of time. You were looking at them like obviously. When you're a fighter, you look at other people in your weight class and think, yeah, I could probably yeah. have a go at him or I could do yeah. this to him or my style would suit his style. So you're definitely looking at people in your weight class and thinking, yeah, I'm not too far off that or we need to do this to get to there. You're looking at a lot of things. And What fighters, what fighters, do, you, what fighters do you look at? Like what fighters, when you like, style-wise, what would you say you compare to? Like what fighters looking, like, what I'd, do you like to base your style on? I'd like to base my style on Bud Crawford. I think he's just yeah. the all-round most exceptional fighter. There's yeah. nothing he can't do. I agree, yeah. Inside, outside, mid-range, short-range. Yeah. He can jab you, he can fight you, he can do everything. And that's what, that's the way I'd like to box. That's the way I train. I'd, yeah. I'd maybe not exceptional at one thing, but, Good at be everything. Good at everything. Yeah, it's true, man. I mean, that's that's so true. When I see 
about you. I do think you're an all-round fighter. It's not like you're just a good pressure fighter yeah. or boxer. You can box, you can pressure fight, you can fight on the inside, you can fight on the outside, you've got a good jab. So you, there's so many facets to your game. But when you say like Bob Crawford, would you just watch videos of him or did your dad go through with it or is it just something? Watch, watch fights for myself. Uh, fights that just say I was fighting up, come on, if I was fighting a southpaw in my next fight, I'd look up Bud Crawford versus the last southpaw he fought or something like that. Yeah. Just to see just to like little things, like little movements, how how he thrown the shots, because you have to throw shots different against different styles. Yeah, so show me, so explain to me, like, um, so if you so just explain to me, like a scenario, like, so just say I'll be fighting a southpaw in my next fight, and I see talking to that, I see Bud Crawford fighting a southpaw. I'd, I'd be looking at how he how he steps off to the side, which way he throws jab, what feints he's thrown, just just little tips that can make a big difference in a fight when you're actually in there. And a feint for obviously people who are in boxing, watching boxing, will understand that feint is when you you feint with a shot. Do you know? What I mean? Yeah, it's like a little yeah, trick like, shot like that. Yeah. So you'll feint. Pretend you're gonna pretend you're gonna throw your left hand, but then you throw your right hand straight after. And why you do that to for them to react? So you get they, them reaction. So yeah. So if they themselves. think they're gonna come, the shot's gonna come from the left. They're gonna yeah tense up on the left, try block on the left, yeah. but the, the shot will actually come around from the right. Oh, if you feint there, you're going to the yeah. Body. If you're gonna feint to the body and you come over the top, yeah. just to, you feint to the head and go to the body. You have to make openings. Yeah, that's true. And I think Bob Crawford, the one thing about him is uh, everything, but his feet are so good, aren't they? Yeah. He's never off balance. Yeah, I think that's how he generates a lot of power. Because yeah. he's always on balance. Never off crossing his feet. Mm. And with Evel Spence, what happens in that fight? Bud and Evel Spence, what happens? I don't know, man. That's one That's one I just can't, I just can't call because Bud is great, but Spence is big, man. That's the thing. He's big, and he's also an exceptional boxer. Like he hasn't been in many scenarios where you you think Spence is in trouble here. Maybe there's been one or two fights there. I can't think of the top of yeah, my head, yeah. but like they're just two. two listen, stop at the top sitting on the, the fence. Who's going to win, Bud or Spence? Honestly, mate. I actually can't. I can't call it. I really nah, can't. I'm not coming back on again. I can't call it. I really can't. In my opinion is Bud wins the fight. That's it. I've always said it. I will, um Terence, Terence Crawford is a level above Errol Spence. He's a great fighter, yeah. Errol Spence. He, to be fair, I am thinking a little bit after this Ugas performance because that was yeah. ridiculous. I think this is the only fight in boxing where I can really say I don't know who's going to win it. Any other fight, Bud, I'll call it. For me, I think it's Bud. It's like a Pacquiao Mayweather type thing. I think Bud is too good, mate. He's so good. The only thing he's is... getting like, old now, though. Yeah, that's See, it. See, Spence could be waiting now. Yeah, he's 24. Way. I didn't realise he was that old. He's 25. Yeah, yeah. So he's only... You, you can't go much up from that. Like, you're only gonna, really going to go down. He's probably hit his peak. You know, so Spence is probably being smart and holding off on the fight. I know. I have slated Spence a bit. I said he didn't, he didn't want the bud fight. And I still believe PBC don't want it. It's my opinion. I don't think we'll see it next. I think we'll see Spence and Thurman. Hopefully I'm wrong. But I just don't. I just don't think we see Bud and Spence for boxing if you don't ever see it. I, I think we'll see it, but when it's, it's like two years yeah. down the line, I just don't think it will happen next. That's my opinion. I hope. I hope I'm proven. I don't wrong. think we'll see it next year, but I think it'll be a terrible shame if you don't. Yeah, it will be. It will be. Uh, it'll be annoying. Very, very annoying. Right. Tell me a bit, a bit, as this will going back to outside of uh, the old uh, boxing and the family life yeah. and all that. So you live with your mum and dad. And your nanny, nanny O'Rourke, yeah. <laughs> and your sister, and is it all? And your mum, obviously, like your mum, obviously, must play a big part. I mean, how she put up with you and your dad? Your dad's like a big baby, <laughs> right, Stevie? Yeah, my dad's like a poor child. <laughs> he is, isn't he? Yeah. Like a baby with me, isn't he? That's yeah. like a baby. Don't I think you are like two big babies, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the shit I hear, man, <laughs> back <Okay>. and forth. <laughs> the messages, man, they can never grow. No, no, we'll put them out. <laughs> And no comments. <laughs> but tell me about that. Your mum must be a big help. Oh, definitely. Yeah, she does nearly everything for me. <laughs> she does a lot, probably too much. But yeah, I don't think I, I don't know where it'd be around. What do you do with like yeah. the food and a diet? Like, how's that come into it? Because I know you've got um, a food guy. Like, I, I like. I have Hanley's meals. Shout out Hanley's meals. Hanley they, meal. Hanley's meals. I put them on there. They support me in in camp, our camp. The where are they based? Off. It's based know. in Ireland, Dublin. No, they're, no, they're not. In they're online, aren't they? They're online now. But yeah, they are, are they Irish? They are Irish, yeah. And um, have they got social media? Hanley? They do have social media. at Hanley's meals. And I, let me tell you something, Hanley's. 
Look after me. They're yeah, coming here. Right? Big fan here, Hanley. I'm not. Big I'm fan. not just saying this, right? I swear to God, you know what I say. Yeah, no. Nice They're pre pre made uh, meals, right? Meal preps, right? Are actually world class. I'm not joking. Like they're literally like food you'd have at a restaurant. I go for. I love him. Yeah, yeah. Tell him to bring me a few. <laughs> Begrudgingly, you might want <laughs> bring me one, and um, I can eat them all day. I'm not actually yeah, lying. They're very, very good meal prep. You're a boxer, right? And you need meal prep, whether it's in Ireland or anywhere. <laughs> First port of gold would be Hanley's for me. For you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. I like their food. Um, so obviously your mum. Before out. that, she was. She did cook everything for me, healthy meals. She was even learning how to cook new stuff. Like, yeah. Just so I could eat her. So yeah, she, she's great. And in your gym in Ireland, like as a with Tony Brown, who was on there a few weeks ago, Superfly Tony Brown, like people don't really know like yours and his connection <laughs> i have another one that'll pick that up now mate mm -hmm. there's Stop another one <laughs> fucking disgusting mate <laughs> i can't help it johnny <laughs> disgusting honestly Thanks. keep this on there back to the serious stuff oh, <laughs> it's not that bad man like gas mask mate Come on. <laughs> right um what was i saying me and tony yeah, so you and Tony Brown have a uh, have a connection, big connection, really, because you two are like, I mean, like twin brothers. I mean, you've known you've known Tony for how many years? Ten plus. And there's literally pictures we will show where yeah, there's we'll get him up. There is some funny like pictures, that, and he's like that. He doesn't. Yeah. He, he looks. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's changed, man. I look like a different person. Yeah. Yeah, he's like he, he's he's always been an adult. Yeah, he's been, he? a, he's been a big bloke since a young Tony age. Tony Brown. Man. He's always been an adult. <laughs> Yeah, he's been big. Yeah, if you, if you actually go on to, if you take the time to go on to Facebook, you'll find some funny pictures. I'm going to put them up on there. Like, you're like that. Yeah, you'll and the next minute you're like that, it's like literally like a family bloody <laughs> thing. Of like, but people don't realize though, like, you and Tony, like, and especially Tony started off with your dad when he come back. He's never boxed before. Oh, yeah, he never saw a job before he came to me, dad. And your dad turned him into an elite Irish amateur fighter yeah. on the verge of going to the Olympics yeah. and turned pro, you know, good. Great fundamentals. A lot of hard work put in by the both of them. Yeah, like, and people don't understand because you're not on TV, you know, and like, your time will come, but this is why this outlet is created for fighters like you, other fighters, other gyms. I don't just like, it's not all about the big names. I like to tell the stories as well in the melting pot, like Irish stew, like when Danny Raw makes <laughs> you can't the beat Irish, Irish stew. stew. You know, he puts with dumplings, yeah. with carrots, and... Um, the potatoes, Johnny. Potatoes. 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 Some potatoes, carrots, beef, carrots, beef, maybe an onion, garlic, onion, no garlic, fish and haddock. Uh, I don't know what sort of stew you're eating, Johnny, but it's not Irish anyway. But it's like, what was I saying? <laughs> I can't remember uh, what I was saying. I'm Bill Tony, I mean, dad. Yeah, Tony, your dad. So um, I don't know how I've brought in Irish stew. I don't know I don't either, remember. Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, the outlet. The outlet is I like to put different ingredients. Yeah. I like to show people stories because I think if you follow me, which now I've got a following now where I think people are following me for the last few years, you can see like how a lot of people say to me, Yeah, I see you posting a lot about the A Works and other fighters, prospects coming through, and now you're coming through food. So they're gonna say, like, oh, I remember this guy from Fight Club 24-7 or Johnny Ashman social. So they're seeing your story as well. So you're developing and developing <sighs> What's going to happen? What would you say in the next few years? Like, what's because now we're getting to the meat and bone. We talk about the Irish stew. Now you know you have your you have your starter, right? Starter, main dessert. You have your starter. You have your dessert. Now we're in the main course. Now we're getting into the stew. We're getting into the main. We're getting now into we are. The we're getting stew, close aren't we? to it. We're not think, at the stew. I think we just finished the starters. We finished the starters. I think we now, just finished the starters. The stew is coming. Yeah, it's, but all, it's, it's bubbling. All the way. It's bubbling away. It's stewing away. It's stewing away, man. Oh, I'd, I'd love to have a European title in the next two years. That's a great title. I think to have, I think that would be a that be a good and realistic show to have a European title in the next two years. Yeah, I'd love that, and then see what happens after that. Yeah, it's so true because I think I think another thing as well is all right. You want to be in the big shows. You want to have a big yeah. promoter behind you. We all want that, but obviously you're living in Dublin. We all know the politics. We all know there's no shows. So your your guy, you guys are literally your backs are against the wall. Like fucking cold, cold, stone cold literally backs behind the wall kind of thing you can't create you can't sell tickets there's no shows in dublin you're from dublin i'm sure you'd raise the house down so people would come and support you in dublin, man. do you know what i mean like that's like a dream and 
that's not been able to happen. So you've had to go out there and just manoeuvre, do you know what I mean? Make contacts, get yourself. You've ended up yeah. in Manchester half the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the main spot now, Manchester, back and forth. That's where the good sparring is. And that's what, that's what we said when Tony comes here that day. Just to explain to me what the benefits of coming to Manchester. It's a top quality sparring. It's just such sparring you wouldn't get at home. Yeah, there obviously is top quality people at home, but there's just such a large pool over here of top quality people. Yeah. You can get all different styles, all different like levels of any nearly anything you anything you need is heard of Manchester some of the top pros in the UK a lot of them come from Manchester and we go to well like, we go your 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 spa yeah. and get um Gallagher's Gallagher's I'm obviously there with you yeah. but like the first time obviously I was with you the first time you went and you know you see Joe and he's yeah. on the TV he's like got an iconic face on it yeah. you know what I mean he's like one of them guys yeah. like he's just got that face you know who it is the iconic figure on British boxing yeah he is though whether you love him or hate him people have opinions I I always say he's one of the best for me he's the best trainer in the UK and that's my opinion I know obviously Brandon Ingle I don't, I'm not sure if Brandon Ingle is British or if I'm not Irish. sure is he Irish so um yeah, right, okay, so, yeah, so, well, then, UK is Joe yeah. Gallagher, no doubt. <laughs> Obviously, if we bring Brandon Ingle into it, if you look at the record and shit, like, world champ, uh, British titles, European titles, and all these kind of things, like, Joe Gallagher, I think, I'm sure he's got more world titles of the same. It might be one behind on the British, or it might be the same, but it's, like, nip, very, yeah, very yeah, close, yeah, and he's, up. obviously, and he'll, he'll overtake that. And I think, for me, like, um, the guy's a fucking winner. Like you're being yeah. around him. Stable of champions. Right? If you if you go in and you're, you're sparring in there, you're in the round, the gym. You are. You're in the round champions, and it's true. It's like we were in the uh, changing room, yeah. having a shower. Do you know, you got Scott Quigg there, Scott you Quigg got Callum Walker, Johnson, in, Callum Johnson. You know, and they're just an old yeah. great guys, man. Like they're all they're like top lead. Do you know what I mean? And it's all like you just talk about just normal bit talking boxing. Yeah. You know, Marcus Morrison, you know, like these these are people who've been in big fights, yeah. been around a long Natasha time. Jones. Natasha Jonas, yeah. Crawley's there. Crawley's you, there. you know, there's all you get. Like he's such a good big vibe, names, man. Yeah, yeah it's names. a big name and uh, big names in that gym. And um, you sparred about Callum Thompson. He's a good fighter, isn't he? Very good fighter, yeah. Good little fighter, a very good fighter actually. And um, when you're in the, when you're in gyms like that, like especially Gallagher's, like what do you think? Do you get nervous when you first went kind of thing, or is it just oh, the same as any other gym? Or is it something a bit different? Obviously, you're excited to go. Oh, maybe a little bit nervous. Wouldn't say too nervous because I've been going in and out of gyms, new gyms yeah. since the age of six or something. Yeah, so true. you know, it's kind of something that I'm just used to now. But yeah, you get excited going to these sort of gyms because. Again, they're going in and around these sort of people, Joe Gallagher, Scott Quigg, Andy Crawler. Yeah. They're like big names. And you're getting to see them, you're getting to interact with them, you're getting yeah. to watch them, learn off Pick them. Pick the brains, really. Pick the brains, exactly, yeah. So only good can come from that. Like Jose Abed, he's Jose the one who's born, been there yeah. a long time. He's always giving advice to people. But the names are endless. <laughs> it is, it's like... That's one gym, that's only one gym, like, you know And it's mean? a conveyor belt, because yeah. if you really look at the UK... Joe's always got a stable of fighters, man. Like after Macklin, Smith, or these guys, Callum Smith, Liam Smith, all the Smiths, Paul Smith, all the Smiths. <laughs> like you know, some he was going through a bit of a transitional period. It was like, right, well, is that the end of it? Is that not? But he's such a winner. He's just yeah. reinvented. He was Jonas, now world champion, Tasha Jonas. Um, Paul Butler, I wouldn't forget him. Yeah. Paul Butler, world champion. World champion now. Yeah. He's probably going to fight the winner of yeah. Dana and the New Age. You know what I mean? It's mm. like again, Joe is. He's in the midst of it. And you know what I've got to say? He's a great guy, man. Like, oh, he's 100%. Like, Jewish. I remember Charlie Edwards saying, actually. I think I know, that's another name. Charlie Edwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's another one. Yeah, you Charlie know, Edwards, you know, it's, you know it's some champion. gym when you're, when you're, Do you know you know what I mean? World, there you go. World champions, yeah. Exactly. Charlie Edwards is there. But he, I just he's not really been there when we've been there. He's been there the once. And I remember when, I think me and Tony Brown went for a coffee with him. Oh, it was Witches. Well, we had Are you with we us? Had yeah, lunch. yeah, it was lunch, before yeah. the... Um, I think it was Wild and Fury before that fight. Yeah. And um, I remember him saying, like, I asked him, what is like, Joe Lyon? like? Because you do hear things, because you, know, you just fight for his fighters, mm. people that do have opinions. And he's like, you know what? He said, he's nothing like the media portrays him. He's just yeah. not like that. I don't think many people are, though. I think the media can portray it whichever way they want it. And then people will obviously believe. Yeah, it's true. When even, you, even though everybody knows the media doesn't yeah. portray the truth, people always seem to believe the media. 
Yeah, because so. he, he does fight for his fighters, and if, you can't ask for more than that. And and to be honest, man, he's always like for me personally, I get home with him. Like he's always yeah. been great to me. I'm sure yourself. It's been great to me, yeah. Like, since I've been there, you know, like so you fair play to him, man. And Steve Mailer, another one. Another, another top gym, yeah. What a trainer, so fires. underrated. Like, yeah. him as a trainer, what a trainer. Who's he? Is that Miller, Liam Taylor, Sam Maxwell? You started Terry him. Flanagan. Terry him. Flanagan as well. <laughs> Obviously, he's not yeah. active now. Not he's anymore, retired, but. but you know, these fight these trainers go under the radar when for me the the some of the be the best British trainers mm -hmm. in and around the game at the moment, like just because they don't talk. I think that's it. Boxing doesn't reward the, the Yeah, because the they're not ones. talking yeah. like this. The gob shit. and the other ones like this, big 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 <laughs> gob, it's all here, ba 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 where the real trainers are in the background, like getting on with the work, not putting the faces of every fucking T V screen. It's all about the they're fighters. Only for the fighters, yeah, not for the fighters, man. And um yeah, so so you're really coming to Manchester. Do you think it's taking your game to that whole new level? Percent to the next level. I think every time I come over here, I feel like I've I, I got home a better boxer. Yeah, definitely. And it gives you it gives you confidence when you when you're in with these sort of people who have four world titles, European titles, European champions, world champions. When you go home and you're sparring at home, then you, your confidence is through the roof. It's true. Like Sam Maxwell when he sparred him, he was a yeah. giant. He's when you beast, sparred man, him, yeah. man, because he wasn't fighting at the time, so yeah. obviously I don't know how he makes bloody uh, like well to it. I think he should yeah. move up in where he's big and like, and I could see it. And I think the great thing about you is your temperament. Like there's times where Sam Maxwell was getting the better with you. There's no shame in saying yeah. that sparring, you know. And um, did you let it bother you? But in your defense, there's times where you've literally got off the plane like three yeah. in the morning and you bounced in. That's a tough side. Yeah, and this is it, too. like. You're coming into the gym and people don't realise they're getting up at three in the morning, flight at six, coming over to Manchester. I'm, in, I'm picking you up. <laughs> I pick you up. Yeah. We usually get lost for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> the sat nav goes on and then we finally make it. We nearly have a few near yeah. death experiences. A few. <laughs> of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't we'll, know. We won't say much about that. But as I always say, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? I haven't been in one yet, but if I ever die, it'll probably be because I'm in a car with Johnny Rashford. No, I'm going to ask, have you ever been in a road traffic accident while John, Johnny Rashford has been in the vehicle? I think because if we do ever be in one, it, it'll be it'll be fatal. <laughs> There'll be no coming back with the under an 18-wheeler. You get there and when you yeah. get back to Dublin in one piece every single time. That's what Just I promise the, you. With that. a few scares. <laughs> and so, yeah, so you're literally getting off the plane fighting. And there's times where you've got the better with people in sparring and handling. You're not, and I've seen sometimes you've had a bit of a rough spar, and it never affects you. Like it's not like oh. sparring, sparring, man. You're gonna, you can't, you can't go into every spar. You can't go into spars wanting to win spars. You have yeah. to go into spars wanting to learn. Correct. So, there's so there's a difference between sparring and fighting. Yeah. You can't take every spar you have personal. You're gonna yeah. go in. You're gonna get battered sometimes. Sometimes yeah. you're gonna batter people. So everywhere it goes, you have good days. You have bad days. Some foot like football. Some footballers yeah. have good games, bad games. Just unfortunately, when you have a bad day as a boxer, yeah. you're getting punched in the face. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, a bad day. A bad day and thing. Yeah, you're, you're gonna get you're gonna get hurt, but then you have to just take the good with the bad. Yeah, it's so keep true. Keep going forward. It's so true, and um, yeah, I can see you keep developing and developing, and um, it's good. Let's tell a little bit quickly. So when we're in Manchester, we're in the car most of the day. A lot of the day, yeah. Risking our lives. <laughs> <laughs> and we do a lot of Thrive Gym. Great gym in yeah, Rockingstone. Yeah, shout out to Thrive Gym. They, yeah, do, a lot, they do a lot for us. Our works, they do a lot for our works Gym. Yeah, they look they after do. us when we come over. The best of facilities. We yeah. get sorted with the best of food, man. Yeah. The best of everything. Danny Randall sorts that Danny out. Randall, Alvin yeah. at Thrive, uh, one of the owners. Great guy. Really believes in you boys. Really gets behind you. And you get a little, you get great facilities. There's a boxing gym there. There's a commercial gym. You sometimes take classes there. So... You, you know, you're building your relationship and it's just a good atmosphere. It's a good it's thing to have, isn't yeah. it? It's a great thing to have, man. I couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah. There's literally, there's nothing you could, you could ask for more than, than what Troy have, uh, approved. Yeah. And no. Danny have. Yeah. Do some for us. Yeah, it's true, man. And, um, Massive it, thanks for that. Massive shout out. hundred percent. Like, uh, I'd say if you, if you want to join the gym, Thrive Gym, Thrive Bolton, gym. Rotten Store, I love, I live there. So, yeah, great gym. Right, Ryan, I'm going to get you on as you you will be back again. Yeah. I just wanted to make if your day. If I'm not dead. <laughs> if we make it to the podcast. No, you will be, mate, as I say. <laughs> you get there in one piece. Right? You get back just to Dublin. Belt. And I'll be coming to Dublin. I love the Irish people. I love them. You know, I, yeah. I've always had a deep appreciation for, especially the Irish boxing fans, man. They are fucking can't beat, them, can't beat the Irish fans. Like, they make the some noise, man. Like, I, I think the UK's, like, England's one of the best fans, but... 
you've got to push me out to the Irish fans, man. They are Indeed. something fucking different. They are. And they back yeah. there and they back everyone. The difference between Irish fans and English fans is like we'll support our own like no yeah. one like just like the Irish. But we'll build them up and knock them down. Where the Irish people doesn't matter what you've done, where <laughs> they'll just support you, not yeah. fucking start. We in England, we like to we like to build you up, put you down, bring you back up. Like if you've done a few things yeah. wrong, you can change. Ireland's not like that, it's like unconditional. Do you That's know what I mean? One, it's yeah. like fucking unconditional. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to coming. Hopefully I'll be treated uh, well. You just might be. Hopefully I'll be looked <laughs> after, right? Right. Let me uh, let me know your thoughts. Follow Ryan on social media. I'll pull it on here. His uh, Instagram, Twitter. And um, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know how you think Ryan will get on as a professional. Get behind him because you will see him on the big shows. All right, Ryan. Thanks very much. See you later.